Ah, oh, cheers, pet. Do you want one yourself? No, thanks. I'm all right for the moment. Oh, well, cheers, then. Cheers. Here for the weekend, are you? Oh, I'm here, me mate. Do a bit of fishing. Well, I hope you get a nibble. <laughs> That's what we all do, don't we? Oh, you got through, did you? Yes, thanks. It's mine. Yeah. What do you want to phone Thelma up for? Just tell her we'd arrive safely so she wouldn't worry. Oh, yes, of course. You'd want to give her all the news. Give her all the highlights of our 35-minute car journey. Just ask her how she was. Well, that's when you last saw her, just under an hour ago. I mean, what could possibly have happened in an hour? What a stupid thing to say. Well, that's when you last saw Thelma. I'm not talking about Thelma. I'm talking about your last remark. What can possibly happen in an hour? <coughs> Pearl Harbor happened in an hour. How long does it take to drop a bomb? How long do earthquakes take? Or tidal waves or monsoons? Yeah, all right, all right. But it's hardly likely that anything's happened in the last hour, is it? I mean, it's hardly likely that tell them has been bombed or there's a flotilla of Japanese warships steaming up the time. <laughs> oh, God, we're in for a great weekend if you're going to be in one of these moods. I'm in a great mood. It's you that's down in the mouth. Not a smile from you all the way up here. Even when that juggernaut crushed the vicar's moped. Not a tip there. <laughs> I'm coming sleuth slaily when we saw that district nurse on her bicycle. And caught an erotic glimpse of her navy blue cami nigger. When I drive, I concentrate on the job in hand. I don't spend the whole journey laughing and giggling. <sighs> and looking out for glimpses of thick navy blue cami nigger. Oh, it's going to be a great weekend if you're going to be in this mood. I'm not in a mood, Terry. It's just you. You have a habit of bugging me these days. All right, mate. I'm sorry. We're here for a weekend's fishing. And the weekend's fishing is what we're going to have. Absolutely, kidder. We shall concentrate on the matter in hand, which is landing the biggest trout in the history of angling. To the fishing. To the fishing. God, how long is it since we've done this? Oh, ages, man. Since before I went into the army. Do you know, I haven't had my rod out since then. <laughs> you know, I haven't, um... War, not since before I got married. Well, you wouldn't, would you? I mean, you can't keep everything up, can you? What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? You were inferring again. I wasn't inferring. You were inferring. Look, all I meant was that when you get married, you have to, you have to give certain things the elbow. I mean, it's expected. That's what marriage is all about. I don't know why it isn't in the ceremony. I promise to love, honour and obey and never enjoy myself again. <laughs> I've only just begun to enjoy life since I got married. My life is one continual round of joy and merriment. Yeah, well, there wasn't much joy and merriment in your household tonight when you said goodbye to dear Thelma to come away with me. You're doing it again, aren't you? You're doing it again, bugging me and mentioning Thelma. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's, I'm honestly trying to think of nothing else but fish and fishing. It's just every time I catch a glimpse of that stuffed trout up there, I think of Thelma. <laughs> What's the matter with your friend? Uh, wife trouble. Oh. Are you married? Not anymore. Are you? Not anymore. Well, we don't get all that anymore. Don't get a lot of things anymore. <laughs> oh, you got through, did you? Yes, thank you. Well, the telephone wires are still up then. The earthquake hasn't struck yet. I simply rang to remind Thelma not to forget to put the catch on the back door. To protect her from the marauding Japanese sailors, no doubt. <laughs> yes, thank you. Can you mind get out of the way, please? Am my buggy new? Yes, you are. Which bed do you want, Bob? <laughs> no, I mean, when you're home with Thelma, do you normally sleep on the window side or on the door side? <laughs> oh, I see, on the sofa. <laughs> Pardon? Did you put an early call in for us in the morning? Yes, six o'clock. Six o'clock? That's what we agreed. We're here for the fishing, right? Fresh air and fun. We're going to relax and enjoy ourselves, right? Right, right, Bob, right. Enjoy ourselves. Joy and merriment. Which bed are you in, then? Well, up to you, kidder. Well, it, I'm not worried. I'm just not worried. Well, I'll have the one by the window, then. I'm used to that. Quick escapes. <laughs> oh, boy, I shall sleep well tonight, though, but after that meal, that was a lovely steak, that, you know. Very tender. And that thing you had looked nice. Uh, what was it? Duck a la orange. Aye, right. big alpins and all. That trifle was good. Oh, wasn't it, eh? And the cheese. <sighs> said she just opened a tin. Pardon? Thelma, when I rang her, said she just opened a tin of something. No, I suppose she wasn't hungry. <laughs> oh, it's not that, is it? She said it to make me feel guilty, didn't she? Well, not necessarily. Maybe she just didn't have anything in. Of course, she's got stuff in. She's got tons of stuff in. Just the shopping every Friday. 
goes to the cash and carry with a covered wagon. <laughs> got a freezer that her father gave. We've got cupboards full of food you wouldn't believe. Guess that from her mother hoarding food in case World War Three breaks out. Maybe she just felt like a tin or something. No, she didn't. She said it to make me feel guilty. Don't start defending Thelma because it does not become you. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I do not feel guilty. I do not feel guilty. Why should I feel guilty? I mean, if a fella can't just go away for a weekend's fishing, I mean, dear me, <laughs> once in a blue moon. I was ever gone to Paris or so. It's only a 35 minute car ride. Yes, I know, I know. I don't feel guilty. It's only because I promised I'd take her over to see her godmother who lives in Hartlepool. Because she's very old, you see, never goes out. In Hartlepool, not many people dare go out. <laughs> I mean, it's Thelma she wants to see. If I'd been at home, she'd have gone on her own, probably, and I'd have stayed at home and papered the back bedroom. Oh, you yeah, had that to do an all, did you? Yes, and fixed the fridge, because that's gone wrong again. Well, maybe that's why she opened a tin. What? Well, because there was no fresh food in the house, being as I, you hadn't mended the fridge. Don't you start making me feel guilty, mate. Whose side are you on? Don't you start defending Thelma, because it does not become you. <sighs> Look, mate. I am your friend, Bob, your friend and fellow angler. My loyalties must lie with you. I don't feel guilty. <laughs> Why should I feel guilty? Oh, for God's sake, Bob, stop telling me you don't feel guilty in that guilt-ridden voice. You will keep forgetting that I have been married, mate. I've been through it all. I've had a wife, so I'm no stranger to misery. <laughs> I will give you one piece of advice, and then from then on, my lips are sealed. What advice? Well... In the early days, you sort of, you sort of set the pattern for the rest of your marriage. I mean, I mean, precedences are established. Now, it is very important that you make absolutely sure that these precedents are in your favour. Now, you've still got time. I mean, you're only just in the opening rounds. And at least you have come away this weekend. And that is good, because that has forced Thelma to accept that from time to time, on occasion, every now and then, you are going to go off and do your own thing, whether it be fishing or football or, or just having a beer with the lads. Well, as I have a beer with you about four nights a week, I think I've established that precedent. Well, quite right and all. I mean, look at little Norman Gordon. He hasn't been across the door since he got married. He's certainly never been near the black horse. He's a shadow of his former self. He's probably wallpaper in his back bedroom at this very minute. Alan Boyle will be doing the crazy paving and, and, and Frank Clark will be babysitting and Barry Pringle still, still converting his attic. Well, Barry will always be in that attic. With him, it's an obsession. He's withdrawn from life. Thelma met Pauline the other day in the cash and carry and she said that he's never out of it. She says she has to send his meal up on a tray. <laughs> yeah, well, if you were married to Pauline, you'd stay in the attic. <laughs> I hope you don't think that my marriage is like that. No, 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 of course not. You told me. Your household is full of joy and merriment. So it is. Most of the time. But you're right, you're right. A, a precedent should be established. I'm, I'm glad I've come away. Assert my masculinity. Right. I mean, she's perfectly capable of going over to Hartlepool on her own, even in these violent times. She's perfectly capable of making herself a meal. She's perfectly capable of looking after herself for one weekend. I mean, what can happen? Yes, look, kid, well, if, if, if we've got to be up at six in the morning, I think we'd better get some sleep. Good night, kid. I said good night. What's the matter? Have you got two P? I think I ought to ring her. Oh. Have a good day. Oh, I've got plenty of fresh air, not much else. One or two tiddlers. Lost me touch, I suppose. I haven't done it for years. You should always keep your hand in. Oh, I expect it'll come back to me. Once you start doing it regularly. <laughs> what are you two on about? I think we were talking about fishing, but you never tell by that one. <laughs> I keep saying these things. 
You'll get nothing there. You'll get nothing there. Oh, I gather by your tone that you got through to Thelma. What do you mean? You gather from my tone that I got through to Thelma. You're in such a foul mood. You obviously got through and wish to God you hadn't. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes, Thelma, she really... She really bugs you. Yes. What are you doing, she says. What do you think we're doing? I said, we're fishing. That's what we're doing. I mean, what possible mischief can I get up to stuck in the middle of the tine in waders? What am I going to do? Have it off with the trout? <laughs> Not with our luck, mate. We couldn't even land one. My sister, my dearest heart, can't you understand that there are some equations when it's just the lads, but there are some things that just lads like doing? And what did she say? Yes, and I know what just lads like doing. <laughs> I said to her, dearest heart, this weekend is just fresh air and fun and fishing. Not a question of fornication. Right, kid, right. Oh, look at that. What? Oh, it's just come in. Oh, yes, not bad. Nice legs. Yes, yes. It's Very important, nice. that. Legs in a woman. Nice face, no? Naughty little mouth. Yes, very naughty. Oh, sorry, what were you saying? Well, oh, Thelma, why does she always automatically assume that when you and I are together, we're chasing other women? That's the wives, man. They always assume you're being unfaithful. Listen, we better catch some fish tomorrow, otherwise we won't have an alibi. Alibi? We can always stop at McFisheries on the way back. <laughs> Why should I need an alibi? And men usually do. Well, I won't. I mean, I couldn't be unfaithful to Thelma. That's what makes her insecurity so unfair. Oh, come on, come on. You wanted to go down the weed chief the other week just because it was full of spare. Well, that's different, isn't it? Chatting them up and looking. But I couldn't do the deed with another woman. Rubbish. No man can pass up the chance of a bit of the other. Depends entirely on the circumstances. Given half a chance, everybody would be at it. Everybody is not at it. <laughs> what? Don't look now. But that girl over there, I've just seen the bloke she's with. <laughs> what of it? It's Mr. Chambers, Thelma's father. Thelma's father? Keep your voice down. I don't believe you. I promise you it is Thelma's father. Rubbish! It is, it is, it's Thelma. I told you, I told you. He's with that girl. I know, I know. The one with the mouth and the legs. Yes, 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 the very girl. I don't believe it. The old rascal. The cheeky old devil. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? You think it's funny, don't you? You do, you think it's funny. Well, I can't see the funny side of it. Well, I don't think it's funny. I think it's disgusting and, and tragic. Well, there's nothing tragic about spending the weekend with her. <laughs> when you're up when I'm his age. I mean, she's not bad. You said so yourself. I just cannot believe it. I've told you, given half a chance, everybody's at it. I, th I think I know who she is and all. She was his temporary. When, when everybody else was down with flu at work, she was his temporary secretary. She looks a bit more permanent now. <laughs> there must be a rational solution. There is. He's a randy old devil. <laughs> oh, I've got it, of course, of course. He went to Edinburgh. Went up to Edinburgh, to the building trades fair. He drove up there Thursday morning. Well, what's she doing with him, then? Well, it's work, isn't it? The building trade fair in Edinburgh, it's business. He'd need a secretary. Well, why wouldn't he take his usual secretary? Well, Miss Avery's old and... Uh, unattractive. And unattractive, yes. <laughs> no, 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 she doesn't travel very well. She gets car sick. Well, why did they stop here? On the way back from Edinburgh. This is not on the way back from Edinburgh. <laughs> it's the scenic route. Oh, well, why stop here? I mean, why not go straight home? He's only 35 minutes from the bosom of his family. He's just dropped in for a cup of tea. Dropped him for a cup of tea while the puncture was mended. What puncture? <laughs> Probably had a puncture. That's the trouble with the scenic route, such bad roads. Dear me, what an imagination. Pardon? Well, the way you've worked it all out, it's a masterpiece. It's nothing to work out, it's a perfectly logical explanation. All right, then, all right. Why don't you walk over there and say hello to your father-in-law? You, you what? Oh, well, what could be more natural? You have just bumped into your father-in-law on his way back from a business trip. Surely you're going to say hello to him. Oh, yes, yes, obviously. Of course I'm going to say hello to him. Like hell you are, he's so guilty you'd give him a heart attack. He has nothing to feel guilty about. All right, then. I wait. I wait. Come on. Come on. Say hello to him. All right. Let's see. Just say anything. Hello, Mr. Chambers. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for giving you a shot. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. 
creep up on you, creep like that. I'll just say to Terry, uh, th there's, there's Mr. Chambers on his way back from Edinburgh. Uh, obviously very busy, having to take a secretary with him in Edinburgh at the building straight fair. And what a, a pity he just propped in here for a cup of tea while the puncture was being mended. But that is the trouble with the scenic route, isn't it? Punctures. Well... Well, oh, yes, yes, we, we've been very busy. We've never stopped, have we, uh, Beryl? I mean, Miss... Uh, uh... Never stopped. No, no, we've never st stopped. Yes. <laughs> what, what exactly are you doing here, Bob? Uh, just fishing. J just Terry and me are having a fishing weekend. Would you like another refill, or are you dashing off? Uh, no, no, yes, yes, yeah, no, we, we only just popped in because of the... Uh, the, the puncture. The, the, the puncture, yes. Yes. Yes to the refill or yes to the puncture? Oh, no, 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 no. We, 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 we've got to get back, you know. We only popped in for a quick one. I've had your things sent up to your room, Mr Mortimer. <laughs> Mortimer? <laughs> Give us a brandy, will you, pet? Do you enjoy your dinner? Oh, yes, very nice, thank you, very nice. I think I ate too much. Well, I ate his. He couldn't eat anything. <laughs> uh, Do you fancy one yourself? I think I might. I'm ready for it now. <laughs> did you get through, did you? No reply. Oh, she must be out of one of them Japanese sailors. Can I have a brandy, please? A large one. Put it on my bill, Valerie. Thank you. You need it. You know, you shouldn't be drinking on an empty stomach. Lots of things you shouldn't do on an empty stomach. <laughs> she keeps saying these things. Shall we go and sit down over there? She's driving me mad. You never know, I might get lucky there. Nothing would surprise me after this weekend. Well, nothing would surprise me. Did you see, George? Just three tables away from his son-in-law, just sitting there bold as brass, with his temporary blatant. And he probably thought there was no point in leaving, seeing as how the cat was out of the bag. He had been in Edinburgh, though, at the building trade fair. I never doubted that part of the story for a minute, Bob. And she is a good secretary, phenomenal shorthand. Doubtless. I don't think this would be arranged, you know, premeditated. I, I think this would just be a... Moment of weakness. Yes, well, seeing as how they've been away since Thursday, I would say there have been several moments of weakness. Yes, they did seem to know each other well, didn't they? I mean, I could see from where I was sat. What? She was touching his knee. Touching his knee. With her phenomenal shorthand. <laughs> Don't you see how traumatic this is? This could have a terrible effect on the family, on me and Thelma, me and him. He's my boss, Terry. I could lose my job. Lose your job? I should think you've just guaranteed yourself a directorship. <laughs> Could he? With that girl? Doesn't he think of Mrs. Chambers? Well, I'm sure he thinks of Mrs. Chambers. That's why he's here with that girl. Ha <laughs> <coughs> 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 yeah, that. It's more world, isn't it? Aye, aye. It is. It is, sir. Bit of a coincidence. Do you mind if I sit down? No, no. Let's have a large whiskey and soda, love, and give the lads a refill, will you? Right. Uh, what was I saying? Small world. What? Small world. Oh, ah, yes, a small world. I mean, it's uh, it's quite amazing. What the bloody hell are you two doing here? <laughs> <laughs> just fishing, just a fishing weekend. Someone told me about it. I've been coming here for years. I've never met anybody else here before. I think you were the someone who told me about it. <laughs> what? Oh, now, listen, don't get me wrong. When I say I've been coming here over the years, you know, it's not been under these circumstances. There's not been a long succession of Miss Atkins' No, no, no. It was just that we was working in Edinburgh, working very hard, as a matter of fact, in... Well, things developed. Moment of weakness. What? Moment of weakness, I expect. Well, you could put it that way, a moment of weakness. Brought on by overwork and strain. Brought on by overwork and... strain. Oh, look, you man of the world, you're a married man. Terry, you're a married man, Bob, yourself. Yes, I'm married to your daughter. <laughs> what? Oh, no, don't get me wrong. I wasn't in for it for a second. It's just that, well, married men understand these things, what these things are about. Ah, of course we do, Mr Chambers. You don't have to explain things to us. We're only sorry if we spoil your evening, aren't we, Bob? Yes, we'll never do it again. Well, well I'm glad <laughs> that's cleared the air. It's as clear the air, lads, isn't it? Nothing more to be said.
Oh, thanks, love. Well, here we are. Here's the men. <laughs> and the women, eh? Oh, <laughs> and them too. We mustn't forget them. Bless their little cotton socks. <laughs> oh. Uh, Beryl, uh, Miss Atkins, uh, this is Terry. Hello. And Bob, I think you know him from the office. Know the face? <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, love. An angel's kiss, please. What's that? <laughs> it's a cocktail, creme de menthe on crushed ice. It's called an angel's kiss. Is it now? Uh, uh, Volley, when you've got a minute, love, can I have an angel's kiss? I'll give you a kiss, but I'm no angel. <laughs> Keep saying these things. <laughs> How's the fishing going, Bob? You caught anything Do yet? You know, we've not caught a thing, and, and we were out there after six this morning. Really? Somebody's going to catch something in a minute. What? Here's your Thelma. Oh, what? Bloody hell! Valerie, the clock. Um, what on earth are you doing here? Eh? Hey, your mother's not with you, is she? No, of course not. I've come to see Bob. Yes. Well, uh, your dad's um, just on his way back from Edinburgh. Yes, back from Edinburgh. Yes, he just uh, dropped in uh, for a puncture. Yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> just, uh, I, I just dropped in. Yes, yes, just dropped in. <laughs> yes, well, I thought I'd stay over the night, you know, do a bit of fishing with the lads. Oh, I see. <laughs> Small world. Yes. yes. Sit down, Thelma, yeah. sit down. S sit down, love. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> what are you doing here, darling? I told you I just popped up to see you. All this way? Well, it's only half an hour at this time of night. Yes, but why did you come? Well, we'll go into that later, shall we? I'm Thelma, Bob's wife, Thelma Ferris. Oh, hello. This is Terry's friend. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like to introduce us, Terry? Yes, yes, of course, yes. This is, um... Uh, um Beryl. Uh, Beryl, Beryl, yes. This is my friend, Beryl. Oh, I'm so sorry, Beryl. I didn't realise you were with Terry. I'd been led to believe this was boys' weekend. What is it you said, darling? Some things just the lads like to do together. Must have got the wrong end of the stick. No, it is. It is. It's boys' weekend. It's just the lads. Just Terry and me. And Beryl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, Beryl's not here for the fishing. I mean, Beryl's here for the... <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Why are you here, Thelma? I came, Dad, because my husband and I have been having a ridiculous running battle on the telephone for the last two days. So I came here because I felt one of us has to make the effort. I borrowed Brenda's car and I drove straight here. I drove here to say I'm sorry because I felt I hadn't been entirely fair. Darling, what can I say? You borrowed Brenda's car and drove all this way just to say you're sorry. You needn't have bothered. You could have rung. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that at all. I, 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 I fancy, fancy... You didn't even owe me an apology. I mean, just... Fancy driving all this way. And now you've got to drive all the way back. Don't worry, I'm not staying. I wouldn't dream of spoiling boys' weekend. Oh, no, do stay, darling, please. No, I wouldn't dream of it. I think you're right, Thelma. I think it's very considerate of you to let the lads have a weekend on their own. I admire that in a woman. Would you like a drink before you go, Thelma? You can't wait, can you, any of you? It's all right, I'm going. No, darling, stay, please, stay. Obviously, you, you, you must stay, I insist. It would be fantastic if you stayed. No, no. Please, please. Well, all right, if you insist. I'll get my overnight bag. <laughs> what do you want? I'd like my toothbrush, thank you, and my book. Hang <laughs> on. Oh, you only lost me place. <laughs> Thelma, all right, is she? Yes, keep your voice down. Is George still here? Well, of course he is. He's not going to leave me alone with Beryl, is he? Oh, this has really wrecked my chances with Valerie, this has. What chances? What chances? She only says to me, I'm in the annex. Very self-contained it is. What's so special about that? The way she said it. Oh, <laughs> the annex. So near and yet so far. Oh, don't complain. You're with that Beryl. Officially. Are you all right, darling? Do you want a cup of tea or anything? I must have been blind. Pardon? I must have been blind, not realising at once what's going on here. Not realising? Terry's not with that girl. He is, he is. That's his friend, Beryl. Look, I may be blind, Bob, but I'm not a fool. 
I realise the situation. You realise? I realise. The situation? The situation. Yes, well, uh, I realise what a shock that must be to you, um, Thelma. Don't think I don't realise that. But, well, men are men. These things happen. These things happen? How many other girls have you brought here? Oh, what? Me? Now, don't lie to me, Bob. It's quite obvious that girl's here with you. She isn't. I swear to oh, you. Oh, don't lie to me, Bob. All this covering up. Terry didn't even know her name. Well, you know Terry. He doesn't always ask their names. <laughs> You've only been married a matter of weeks. How could you? Where are you going? I'm going to see my father. Darling, darling, don't go in there, please. I beg of you. Don't touch darling, me. Darling, please, I, I beg of you. Um, take my word for it. If you do, you might see something which will haunt you for the rest of your life. Oh, leave me alone. Daddy? Uh, Thelma? Hello, Thelma. Couldn't you sleep? Oh, oh Dad, how could you? Uh, Thelma, don't jump to conclusions. Things are not what they seem. There's nothing between I've Terry and I. I've been covering up for him, my husband. This just proves what I thought. If Terry was with that girl, he'd be with her now. What an earth's all the commotion. I know. I know the situation. I know you're with my husband. Well, someone tell her I'm not. He's not. Look, I'll explain this. Now, look, Beryl, I mean, Miss Atkins. Uh, I'm with him. Only we had a row because he would keep chatting up that barmaid. So I locked him out. But I've just come to say, all's forgiven now, pet. <laughs> yes, well, um, if you'll excuse me, Mr Chambers, uh, I think I'll say good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Robert. Sweet dreams. Good night. Uh, after you, uh, um... Beryl! Oh, dear. Oh, I've made a bit of a fool of myself tonight. There, there, darling. And I really did come to apologise to you. I know, I know. It doesn't matter. I suppose the trouble was I just didn't trust you enough. Darling, without a little bit of trust, a little bit of basic trust, where are we? Just have to learn to respect my word, give me the benefit of the doubt. I might be guilty of many weaknesses, but chasing other women isn't one of them. She thought I was Terry. 